So I've got a question for you today. <laughs> this one is a little bit provocative. So just to remind you, I'm on the other side of the screen and if you throw tomatoes at me, they're not gonna reach, okay? They're just gonna make a mess of your keyboard. You're running a business. You want to make a difference in the world. But if you took a step outside of that, would you actually hire yourself? Hello, my name's Claire Yosa. I am an inside work magician for entrepreneurs and passionate world changers. And I've been mentoring entrepreneurs and passionate world changers for 15 years. I'm the author of Dare to Dream Bigger, the inside work handbook. And what I've discovered over the 15 years is there's something that happens when you leave your day job and the corporate rat race and you step into those CEO shoes of running your own business is we become unhirable. And it's not an immediate thing. It happens gradually over time. And Brian Clark has a brilliant po podcast called Unemployable. Now that's different. I personally consider myself unemployable because never again, after 15 years of doing this, could I go back, I hope not, I couldn't go back to being hired by somebody else and told what to do day in, day out for years. I call that unemployable. The mistake so many of us are making is we're unhirable. Now, this happens if you go the solopreneur route. That's the most common time it happens. If you've got a team around you and you've got salaries to pay and you've got business rent and business rates to pay, it tends not to happen. You tend to step into your CEO soul shoes and get on with the job. When you're a solopreneur or you're in that kind of semi-freaked out freelancer stage, this is where the unhirable starts to come in. So when I talk to people in that position, they're working too hard. They're usually earning less than they used to in a full-time job, but doing more hours. They are so busy working in their business that they never have time to work on it. So strategic planning and development is seen as a way of constricting your freedom so that you don't actually have a clear plan and a step-by-step -step how you're gonna get there. People end up flitting between one exciting project and the next, but never actually getting anything finished and created and out there and saleable, yeah? I call it shiny object syndrome. There's a whole section of it on it in here. Then people say they're too busy. They're overwhelmed. They're procrastinating. They're easily distracted. Now I want you to imagine for a minute, going back to your corporate days, if you were a manager in somebody else's business and you had a team member who wasn't setting clear objectives, who wasn't making tangible progress towards the goals, who was spending too much time on Facebook and social media, claiming it was all for the business success, who wasn't concentrating, who was unfocused, who was overwhelmed, distracted, stressed, flitting between exciting ideas, but not actually delivering results. Would you still want them in your team? But it's where most of us end up on our entrepreneurial journey. And we, we're we putting in the effort, but it's not working. So how does this happen? Well, I've researched this a lot over the years and I've interviewed many, many people who've been through this and come out the other side. And the conclusion that they and I have reached is there's a difference between being an employee and being a CEO. And when you want to run your own business, whether it's teaching local yoga or designing a widget that's going to change the world, you have to become a CEO. You have to start thinking and behaving like the managing director of a business. This isn't an expensive hobby. This is something that needs to earn you an energy exchange for what you're doing. That means you can put food in the fridge while you still get to make a difference in people's lives. But the more we get into overwhelm and distraction and stress and lack of clarity, the more we spiral into that unhirable, stressed out, overworked freelancer or solopreneur. So when I work with people to get them through this and out the other side, there are three key steps we go through. One is total clarity on what you want to achieve, your big why, your big vision, your big message. What is the one thing you want to create? And it might be in the next month, the next year, the next five years, or your legacy. Then we get crystal clear about the hidden blocks. 
okay? What's getting in your way? So back in your corporate days, chances are you had a manager that spotted when you were going off the rails and they would haul you back in and potentially fear of being disciplined or having a bad appraisal would be enough to make you push through your blocks and your fears and your comfort zones. And having that team around you would mean that you felt the courage and the strength that you just got on and you did it. When you're at home on your own, the stories in your head can come to the fore and really get in your way. It's much easier to kind of try and dodge around your blocks instead of just dealing with them and clearing them out. That can be imposter syndrome, feeling like a fraud. It can be self-sabotage. It can be trying too hard and not getting the results. It can be limiting beliefs, fears. It can even be identity level stuff. In fact, it usually is. So step two is getting totally clear about what your hidden blocks are and clearing them out. And step three, is about connecting with your inspired action. So this is where you get to set yourself free from overwhelm and focus on the concrete steps that make the difference and create breakthroughs. You connect with your inner wisdom, yeah? So those are the three steps, complete clarity, clearing out your blocks, inspired action. There is a tool that runs through all three of these that I would love to share with you. I'd love for you to get this tool, this habit, and it costs nothing for you to do this every day, apart from 10 minutes of your time. <laughs> okay, it's meditation. <sighs> I know it's not about turning your legs into a pretzel. You don't have to go and live in a cave. You don't have to take on new belief systems. It's a way of training your mind to focus. It's a way of accepting the present moment instead of embellishing it with the stories and the drama from the past. It's a way of being able to connect with that inspiration when you most need it. 10 minutes a day of meditating helps you to have clarity. It helps you to take what the psychologists call that meta position, so standing outside of your drama and see what's really going on, see the games that you're really playing, the dance you're dancing with other people without the projection, without the overlay of life's movie, so that you can really get clear on what the blocks are and clear them out. And it helps you to connect with those seeds of inspiration, of inner wisdom that allow you to take inspired action. And it cuts your stress levels and it gives you more energy, and it makes you smile more, <laughs> and it only needs to take 10 minutes a day for you to start feeling the benefits. So I'm the author of the 28 day meditation challenge and 52 mindful moments. And I've been teaching meditation as a formally trained meditation teacher for almost a decade now. I'm also a reformed engineer, so I love practical, grounded, common sense stuff that works with a generous dose of engineer approved woo woo and the best of modern psychology because I've been an NLP trainer since 2003. So I love taking people just like you through how to meditate, through how to get past their blocks, fears, excuses, myths, how to find the time and how to create the habit and how to find a way of meditating that works for you so that you'll actually do it and get benefits from it. If you'd like to try it on for size, I'm running a five day taster. It's, you can join us, claireyosa.com forward slash how to meditate. That's C-L-A-R-E-J-O-S-A dot com forward slash how to meditate. And in it, you're going to get a 10 minute meditation MP3, because frankly, if the phone went right now, you could find 10 minutes. Yeah. So you can find 10 minutes in your day. If you can't, then that's fine, because it means you haven't really made the commitment to meditate. I'm inviting you to try this on for size for five days. That's not much of a commitment to make and you get to experience it. So you get your meditation, a workbook to help you figure out what meditation might mean for you and how to keep yourself motivated and a daily message each day to address some of the common pitfalls that would normally derail people. So if you want to turn things around and you want a tool that allows you to move from being unhirable, stressed out, overwhelmed, distracted and not making the progress that you deserve in just 10 minutes a day, join us clayosa.com forward slash how to meditate i can't wait to share this with you